Recently, I put out a call for all of you to get your starter fake mon redesigned by four artists. We requested you to submit your grass, fire, water, electric, and normal type starters, with each artist redesigning an evolutionary line from each type, with room for a wild card. We received over 100 fantastic submissions from all of you amazing artists, and now we're finally ready to show you how we reinterpreted them. Also, shout out to Trigger7 for inspiring this idea. We're joined by Ryoma Art, an incredible fake man artist with a growing presence on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Fruppy Art, a content creation juggernaut responsible for the Paleon region alongside other incredible fake man. And Mr. Bonnie John, a fantastic character designer who loves to tell amazing narratives with their designs. Check the description for their channels. Be sure to subscribe and ding a ding dong the bell so you don't miss future uploads. With all that said, let's see some starters. Ryoma, do you want to show us which fake man you decided to redesign? Yes, I do. So, uh, the Pokemon I decided to redesign was a grass starter line from the lovely Pumpkined Patch on Twitter. I remember seeing this one. Yeah, this yes. one this one definitely appealed to me because it has like mm -hmm. um, very non grass starter vibes, mm -hmm. which appeals to me. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, this is Toxabrat, Toxa Shade and Toxidily. They're, they're based on Nightshade, and they said they delve a bit into witches and the poisonous foods trope. Um, so I'm thinking like Snow White. So in, in terms of what I really liked about this design and what drew me to it, it was a lot to do with the first evolution. The use of the kind of hood made of Nightshade, I thought was really cool. I, I think it looks a bit like an eggplant, in um mm -hmm, in this yeah. first stage um <laughs> but but you know that that endeared me to it i thought it was sweet bro it's um, devious it is very cute it is cute in terms of like it's the other bits it is solid i think it's probably the most solid of the evolutionary line um i think the proportions obviously aren't quite starter there it's it's got the the hunch which is obviously supposed to be the hag kind of witch thing that like it's going for the poisonous mm -hmm. foods trope i didn't want to start off with that i felt that was a little bit that was something i wanted to save for the final evolution and i was going to add add a little bit of progression to it yeah. uh so we're, we're working with the with the snow white idea here so i thought well what better way to start the line than with you know actual Snow White. What drew me to Pumpkin Patch's starter was this first form, Toxabrat, specifically with the way the nightshade was integrated like a little bonnet, so that was the main feature I wanted to expand on with this design. I knew that my altered concept for the line wouldn't fit its old bratty personality, so I workshopped vacant, surprised, and happy expressions before eventually settling on Shy, which worked with the innocence of the Red Riding Hood or Snow White inspiration. I struggled with the line art since the expression was quite subtle and delicate, so it took some trial and error to translate it from the sketch to the final piece. As much as the original design's turquoise blues are striking, starters are often very particular about their representing type, so the skin fell on the greener side of turquoise, and the nightshade petals became more of a lilac, since the eggplant similarities kept that deep purple from working the way it should have. I go back in on the line art again, and voila, finito. This is Boneft. Oh my god, oh, that's dude. Great. Oh my god. That hood so, works so well. That's yeah. fantastic. Honey, is it like a rotten apple, or that he's holding? It's like a little berry. It's like a mm -hmm. nightshade berry, because nightshade do have like little berry fruit things that come with them. That's kind of the main through line of, of the line is this berry. So right now it's it's very kind of fairy tale. It's got a bit of Snow White, but it's also got a lot of Red Riding Hood kind of yeah. taking mm -hmm. the food through the forest with the big hood. And obviously I turned the nightshade into this kind of cloak that it's wearing. Also, yeah. I think with the first design, it wasn't very clear exactly what it was. There was no um, like specific animal basis. And I, so I was thinking, well, what, what would work here? And I think, well, we're going into witchy territory later. So I'm going to start with a newt because that's kind of, you know, they've got the eye of newt or yeah. and stuff. I also felt that those, they're poisonous as well. So it fits with the poisonous nightshade. Um, although it isn't a poison type quite yet. The modern day starters, they are designed um, to be more like individuals, you know, characters that fall into, uh, maybe like a storyline that they share across the other starters and setting up this little guy to be sort of this fairy tale-esque kind of character like it really tracks it feels like the inspiration like the original source work um was like the older days of the starters where they were like a creature and then they become 
a bigger creature and after that the biggest of the creatures mm -hmm. this feels like that modern day like let's go ahead and you know find that archetype and and build the character and so i think that's like super successful in modernizing the design that is like a pretty nice triumph there Thank you. Yeah, I think people who, who watch me will know that I am a big fan of a lot of the more modern design sensibilities in terms of Pokemon design. So yeah, I really wanted to get that that through line. So yeah, this is uh, this is Boneft, a pure grass type, which is a change from the original, which was grass poison right from the start. Um, and I decided to change that because it's not become this kind of evil witch character. It's yet, innocent so before I'm... it's developed its uh, yes. toxic personality. Exactly. So yeah, this is the Fruit Newt Pokemon, which I thought was quite a fun classification. Very nice. uh, the Sun stuff was based on the extra fact to do with the starters, which was that they love the sun, but as the life progresses, they slowly become allergic to it um, and try uh -huh. and cover their body over. Loving it, loving um, it. I didn't keep that completely because I obviously got this big cloak because um, I thought I was mainly tying into the fairy tale idea of this of this line. But I I do like the idea that they they do utilize the sun to grow their berry. Um, it's gonna say it was, it's like a nice kind of juxtaposition of they love the sun, but they also like have a hood. Yeah, yes. I mean, you it's, need to, you know, protect yourself some, from the sun rays so it can still yeah, track. They're you know? responsible. There's no sunscreen in the wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm also absolutely digging that shiny. Is it based on anything or is it just a cool oh, combination of colors? Indeed. As I was doing a newt, I was looking at poisonous newts because obviously this will become a poison type by the end um so i found the most poisonous newt which is the rough skinned newt um Very so cool. that's why it's got kind of the pinkish orange sort of skin color and then the white hood is because it's snow white and it's supposed to be uh, a snowdrop oh my that's god perfect. we got layers oh, upon gotcha. layers like it we do indeed I'm super interested to see how this progresses into what we've seen in the original art, or if it, what other directions it's gonna go. I'm only one in, like, <laughs> I'm so interested to see how it's gonna repeat four times over. So, the middle evolution, Toxic Shade. This, in my opinion, is probably the one that needed the most work. I'm a fan of the first and last evolution, but this one felt like kind of a strange stage. I understand where it's going, like the the flower is kind of turned into this frill and it's kind of enveloping the face. He's got a poncho um, on. Yeah, exactly. And I, I do manage to work that into to this version, but it's it's kind of got this very animalistic body with these huge hands and I'm I, that definitely is another thing that threw me off with what animal it was supposed to be it also has got this kind of monstrous mouth and I'm and I'm like okay well I'm going very not super humanoid but a more human design inspiration so how can I tie that in Toxic Shade's new design was absolutely the toughest to nail I knew I wanted it to represent the evil queen as a midpoint between Snow White and the old hag from the fairy tale but the body type was extremely tough my initial concepts were monumental departures from the original and even though this was the form that needed the biggest overhaul I wanted there to at least be some semblance of Toxic Shade in there eventually I realized that a more animalistic frame would help so I worked off Pokemon like Gobite, editing it to be more like a salamander. This meant it could look as monstrous as OG Toxashade while still having a queenly personality. The cloak transitioned into a grand collar piece and the berry was integrated into a crown. I enjoy it when mid-stage colors make a strange departure from the other two stages, but this Pokemon's didn't end up too dissimilar to the rest of the line. This Pokemon is definitely the odd one out. But I think that difference makes for a great evolutionary progression that reflects the fairy tale basis. This is Hegemonda. Whoa. Ooh, I love the name too. Even more fairy vibes where like maybe this guy like kind of gives me like princely vibes almost with like the crown kind of thing. This is going to be the most sus thing I've ever said in my life. I love his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you got the big, hey, yo. the big gooey like yo. Um, newt feet. They're done, but they're done like really well. Is the... Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. I'll, I'll take it. It is a, it is a bit <laughs> sus, but they're, 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 there we go. Um, so you're right to pick up on the princely vibe. It's because I think the best stage between Snow White and the uh, Evil Queen's like hag form is the oh. Evil Queen's Evil Queen form. Um, mm. So that's that's what we're working with here. So yeah, the okay. the hood kind of becomes a, a collar, like a big headpiece. Um, the berry obviously become gets worked into the crown. Oh, I didn't explain the name of the first one. I'm gonna just go back to that quickly. You can edit around this. <laughs> Dead. Boneft <laughs> is a combination of 
bonnet, because it wears a little bonnet, and Eft, which is a baby newt. That's oh. kind of it. Mm. Yeah. And then this is Hegemonda, which is hedge, because it's a grass type. Hegemon, which is like a rulership. And obviously Salamander. That's a layered name for sure. It just sounds good. It, it does, just, yeah. I like it. Just, yeah, it Rolls just sounds good. Tongue. I don't know what to say. Like, I was already <laughs> yeah. on board with it when I just thought it was Hedge and Salamander, but then it has that extra, like, meat to it. I'm like, hell yeah. Taking the role of Monarch, Hegemonda are highly regarded thanks to their top berry picking abilities. These Pokemon are extremely haughty, taking great pride in their self crafted crown where they display their berry to jealous Boneft onlookers. If other Hegemonda hold finer berries than them, they will become extremely bratty and upset. Oh my god. That shiny is so good. Again, yeah. that shiny is fantastic. <laughs> um, I love, so I love this pose, right? This upright pose that we, I'm glad that you ditched the hunch. I'm sure maybe it will come in later, but this just works so much better for that middle stage. Yeah. It makes them Thank snooty. You. Snooty booty. I, just, yeah. I, can, I can so clearly kind of see it. What, it's like two feet taller than Beneft as well. It's just kind of looking down at them yeah. like, <laughs> my berry's <laughs> on my head. You can't even reach this. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I love, because um, usually with kind of shinies in evolutionary lines, they kind of keep the same colors switched to the same colors. But with this, yeah, the normal versions are si similar colored, but then the shiny is kind of diverse into two different, like it's so, it's such a small touch that adds so much where you'd be like, I really want to shiny hunt this thing. So hopefully you don't fumble the bag with the shiny in the third stage, <laughs> but I really well, doubt it crossed. after these phase two. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a look at the final stage, which I think is a really interesting one. So this is Toxidaly. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely got a really interesting body type. It's kind of bowling pin esque, um, and not even in a bad way either. I I do like it. I was particularly looking at the stubby legs, the really long tail, and also the integration of the cloak. I do really like how the cloak is used, and the fact that there's the eyes are covered over with them, which isn't something I keep, but it does kind of play into the animal that the final one is based on. Oh. Because we start out with a newt, we go into a salamander, so we're kind of getting bigger. So I'm thinking, what's the biggest, like, version of this? So have you guys ever seen an ulm? Oh my god, I knew it. Yes. No. So this oh, is an ooh. ulm. Bro, that's it's from Breath of the Wild. He flies in the air <laughs> and flies of the kingdom and I've seen it as well. <laughs> So yeah, and I think the the Ulm fits super well because it's kind of very mystical, very magical, which works with the witch um, mm -hmm. bits. And also the very long tail that it has, I think fits into it. To my surprise, this form came to me incredibly naturally, with inspirations I hadn't even considered making their way in very organically as I drew. I initially wanted to make the nightshade a witch hat in this form, but decided to downplay that in favour of the huge cloak. I thought that positioning the tail like a cauldron would be a funny, but ultimately not practical idea. Actually, it turned out brilliantly, especially since I realised that emphasising Toxidaly's already long tail would make perfect sense. That's when the idea to make this Pokemon an Olm came to me, and the hunched posture of an old witch became the curled body of a 13-foot amphibian tucked inside of a nightshade cloak. The berry finally fulfilled its purpose as the poisoned apple, dripping with the Pokemon's toxic ooze. The colours are a little more greyed out than the other two forms, which reflects its old and witchy personality. I'm very pleased at the fluid direction this line took, and with how the art turned out, and I think the concept really came into its own. This is Viragolm. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. My okay, shut it down. God, dude. This is awesome. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. Oh, On the wow. berry is the skull. I, oh my god. Wow. Yeah, I can't. I just couldn't. I can't. I can't. Okay. Uh, no white poison apple is perfect. Yeah. 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 I kept the design for that pretty, pretty safe. And the, the tail pattern kind of looks like an overflowing cauldron almost. I don't know if that was intentional. It, that is fully intentional. Yeah. That was something when I was designing, I was like, <laughs> this is really silly. And I did it, I'm like, well, that works really well, actually. Um, well, and I can just kind dude. of imagine, like, with it up on its tail like that, that it's not like it's a flying type, it's not levitating, but that's just kind of bobbing around motion yeah. like it is. It's just 
that comes through in a Dude, static oh image. My God. I can so clearly imagine it if, like, when it comes out of the Pokeball, it's just gonna on its legs and then it just raises up slowly, revealing oh, the tail. Wow. Like, it's it it is that thing that um, Bonnie alluded to, where starters like all starter Pokemon now have like jobs, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's like this. They need to earn their keep. Yeah, it's like this has been like a character development, and it's so. It just feels like a really natural progression. It's simultaneously not the direction I expected it to go in, but also kind of everything I wanted from it. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you very much. I felt that a lot of it is kind of hidden by the big cloak. Um, so I decided I'll make some concept art for it. So there you go. There's you... Your, oh my god. god. You're <laughs> making us look bad. They long, In the best boy. kind of way. Oh my god. Nice. This is so cool, dude. Wow. Thank you, a thank little you. scrunched up body under there is very cute. Yeah, that's what I really wanted to convey. Oh is, my god. Uh, yeah. Guys, the video I, the video is done. We're like, let's yeah. just leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I wanted to say earlier too, the, the sh first of all, I love that, you know, it's still like, you know, this grass type. I can very clearly read like the flower, you know, it just feels like, you know, the vine of this flower is lifting up. And then the shape of like the hood too, like breaking the silhouette is so beautiful. I love that movement that's there. And then, you know, I'm surprised DBS hasn't said anything about the feet. So I won't, you know, I'll leave that for <laughs> like the after dark commentary, but I, man, I got to redo mine. <laughs> Let me just, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, let's so let's meet up again so in a month. Good. <laughs> I, I can s is like the is the top right where it's kind of darting out of the flower is that just kind of like a scenario or could that be like a physical attack animation where it's like nah bye I'm coming to get you yeah um the kind of the one in the middle is sort of the I, I didn't have time to like fully draw the special attack animation because it would be very kind of a lot of movement like brewing and yeah, yeah, yeah. sort you know mystical stuff but yeah I think it's not a terrible physical attacker either, so I think it would just like fly out of its flower and. It's all like springed up, ready to go. It's like a loaded exactly. gun almost inside there. It's yeah, Viragon. The name comes from uh, Virago, Hag, which both mean like evil witch lady, and obviously Olm, mm -hmm. utilizing the poisonous fluid that Viragon, Viragon secretes from its curled tail. This Pokemon is able to send a ruthless barrage of deadly fruit at its prey, which is known to cause a mystical sleep upon the victim, which I think would be its signature move, like a uh, a special move that causes sleep on the opponent. Um, hidden beneath its petal cloak, this body is unnervingly long and slippery, being shaded from the sun's rays to stop it from drying out, which then ties into the original thing that was the fun fact. Uh, it feigns fragility to get the jump on stronger Pokemon. Oh my god, dude. The, this is great. The signature move putting them to sleep as well. Like, it's. Oh my god. <laughs> and I, I don't know who wants to say it. The shiny. Yeah, the shiny. Three, oh, three for three. Man. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. hunt for that shiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you like it. Absolutely Masuda methoding this thing. I, I have just noticed, and I'm glad you showed us the reference first, that it's 13 foot 8 inches. Because yeah. looking at oh. it in the silhouette, I'd yeah, be like, that makes sense. I'd be like no, makes it's, sense. no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Thank I'm you. A, I always go grass starter, so, you know, I'm eating so good today. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'm eating that candied apple and ready to die for it. Oh, no. In the order of, um, it goes grass fire, so... Next up, we're gonna see our fire types from Fruppy. That's me. Well, nice. my fire type is not a newt, but I have these submissions from Craft Bros. This is a fire line. Uh, the images are not the best quality, so you might need to kind of zoom in. Oh, uh, but yeah. they're they're based on the bull guy, which is uh, essentially like a Korean hellhound. It's like, it's a little less mean than that in the lore, but essentially it chases after the sun and moon and causes eclipses. So the main thing with this is very cute, very fun. Right off the bat, they're all, it's like 
basically the same thing three times, just with like yeah. extra stuff kind of getting tacked on. It has what's referred to as uh, Gesbiga syndrome. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, so I needed to really focus on like changing the body, breaking up the silhouette, making it like distinct, moving through the things. But general concept, like bull guy, fire dog. Yeah, good to go. I didn't have to do much beyond that. So, the whole line is based on the bull guy, which is from Korean folklore and functions as a sort of hellhound that chases the sun and moon and causes eclipses. But to start off and to give variation, it's going to be a super young puppy, gigantic noggin, kind of clumsy and off balance, and the eyes are just barely starting to open. The original drawing was pretty complicated, so we'll be simplifying a lot to get it to a place that feels like a starter's first stage. He needs to be just more puppy. He needs to be teeny tiny, itty bitty baby little puppy guy. Oh, so okay. portions. All right, yes. get out of here. <laughs> Go on and get. So big old head, big old nose, all that good stuff. Um, so fun fact, my my best friend, her dog just had puppies, right? So I've been hanging around with, with newborn puppies as of late. And one of the things is like when they're little, right? They, their eyes aren't open yet and they actually can't hear anything. Their ears aren't open. So they're like, they're kind of like heat seeking missiles. You like sit down next to them and they like, they <laughs> smell you and they can sense the heat and they like wiggle meh, towards you. Um, so that's kind of the inspiration for this guy. He can't see very good. Uh, and he's just going towards the, like warmth. He's going towards warm things. I like how you didn't literally turn oh, it into yeah. a missile. Because <laughs> that, that gave me some <laughs> no, visuals for sure. <laughs> oh, missile dog. Oh, he's... Missile dog. I love um, just the simple addition of separating the flame from the body. Because I feel like if the if it was like attached somehow, I'd be like, oh, this is like Chimchar and Charmander. You know, but the fact that it's separate, I'm like, oh, it's a whole new thing. And the, the stylization <laughs> of the flame has that kind of missile energy. Yeah. I could imagine this guy getting zoomies, but obviously if he can't see, it might be a bit dangerous. Oh, that's so cute. And he, yeah, maybe the flame gets bigger as he gets like more excitable. <laughs> like instead of wagging his tail, it just kind of like bursts like back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like a that. fart. <laughs> it is, it's I a was... little fire fart. It's oh, a fire the fart. fire yeah, fart any... Pokemon. <laughs> Anybody who's been around dogs, they know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're dreadful. But yeah, um, you know, for real, I, I see all your Pokemon you do, Fruppy, and like I've always loved your rendering style. But this, this is incredible. Like the the actual like art itself is fantastic here, especially. Thanks. Yeah, he's a cutie. Uh, okay, so I didn't have to change the name for this one. He stays Bulga Pup. I mean, it, it, it's a good enough name. It's cute as is. Mm -hmm. uh, so being so young, its eyes have only just started to open. Because of this, Bulgapup has extremely bad eyesight. Luckily, its nose is extremely sensitive, and it is able to follow heat sources. This occasionally leads to the puppy chasing its own fiery tail. On particularly sunny days, little Bulgapup chases the heat from the sun itself. Oh my god. Oh, here we go, setting up the lore. Mm -hmm. Which nice. is kind of fun. Okay, mm -hmm. so it kind of ties to Rayoma's, like, I mean, yours has a little bit of tying into the sun, so and this does too. Oh my, okay. Oh. Um, you guys were developing a whole uh, region together without to us, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so cute little puppy. Now, when we go to the second stage, the, like, kind of the amount of detail that's on there is about the same. So this one changes the least. The original designs didn't have nearly enough differences between the three stages, so the first and final get some pretty dramatic reworking, but that means that this middle stage gets to remain the closest to the original drawing. I also let this one look pretty dark and intimidating since the dog originates from the Kingdom of Darkness, though this edge won't stick around for the final stage. Oh, and I just had to give it the curly tail of the actual dog breed named after the bull guy. The posture is a little bit different, but it's essentially the same thing. Uh, and that's this little guy right here. So we're okay. going we're going grumpy with our teenager, with our middle stage, uh, a little angsty. You mentioned it was uh, a hellhound. Like I'm definitely getting that with the kind of heat emanating from inside the body. 
Yeah, he's he's toasty. He's a toasty boy. Um, I just love the stylization of the mouth. Yeah. Like it kind of looks like. It's printed on, but it feels alive still. It feels very unique, you know, like I don't even know how to describe it. I was pulling in like a, a little bit of the kind of stylized Korean influences into it. Uh, Not a ton, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's kind of where the mouth is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so he was Bulga Bark, um, but I changed one letter. So he is Bulga Bork. Because that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this fierce canine, his tail burns like a tiny sun. Um, and I had to get that, like, sp like there's an actual dog breed that is called the bull guy. And it has kind of that t curly, twirly tail. So that's where it comes from. Um, it loves to play fetch all the time. And once a trainer has started throwing a ball for a bulga bork, they will be doing so for hours. Uh, it will chase after anything round, which sometimes includes random objects, other Pokemon, and when they are particularly desperate, they will even chase after the sun and the moon. So bringing in that eclipse lore oh. stuff. Oh, it was it, it was set up right there. I didn't even see it coming. <laughs> the sun tail is brilliant. Yeah, the sh I, I meant to point it out in the first one. Oh, the, the shiny. Yeah, the shinies are like a really like. To me, it's just like regular dog colors, but like aesthetic. I'm wondering, is there any? Yeah, so they're, I, I, you know, I kind of like the blue fire shinies, but these are a little bit more muted because uh, I kind of want them to look like they're almost undead because this thing comes from essentially the underworld, uh -huh. dark, the dark realm kind of. So having it be ghosty undead with that shiny, I thought would be kind of fun. Yeah, that, that tracks. That tracks for sure. It's Yeah, and it, I mean, gray, you think of smoke regardless, so it still fits the tight, you know? And it's got a very active pose as well, which yeah. I, I'm a big fan of. Just see a lot of personality in it. It still has the element of that the flames are kind of next or like parallel to it, as opposed to just being on it. It's mm -hmm. such a it's such a subtle thing, but it adds like so much um, uniqueness. Because it's like I always come back to it whenever I talk about dogs and Pokemon. It's like how many fire dogs have we had now? Like. <laughs> three four almost keep them coming but it's like oh. this one still is completely unique to the other ones and has all of its own charm like i would have all of those fire dogs on my team gladly because they're all like they're all good boys yeah yeah, yeah. interesting oh. that it's the moon dog but i guess it is set up he's firing yeah he's also in the original drawing, he has like a little crescent moon on his side, so I tried to pull that in as well. Yeah. Um, so he goes sun, moon, and then when we get to the third one, uh, I just kind of went overboard. Um, I threw everything at this last one. It's a bit much, but, uh, well, here it is. The original design had it gaining the fairy typing, so that's going to help make this last design distinct with an extra helping of glamour. This graceful pose, it just helps a ton. I believe that the fairy typing was added because, well, it's a myth, but also to play up the celestial and eclipse elements from the mythology. The original design was a bit complicated, but I made sure to maintain some of the round sun and moon shapes along with the stars. It maybe turned out a bit too epic, but I still like it. So this is our eclipse. So it's sun, it's moon, and it gains the fairy tale. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my That's god! Sun, moon, and stars, I get it. This is what Pokemon Stars never was. Wait, and then it's also shaped like a ball. It's round in itself in the silhouette. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is definitely like mega territory of like complexity, but I couldn't resist. Um, yeah, and I was surprised. So they originally had the fairy typing, and I was like, that's this. That's awesome. That's part of the reason why I picked it. I was like, that's so awesome that they didn't just grab like the dark type, mm -hmm. right? It's so easy to put dark type, fire, dark, hellhound thing. Um, but pulling it into eclipses and giving it this kind of celestial magic-y stuff, I just thought was a lot more interesting. So yeah, good on them for picking a cool typing. Wow. Sorry, wow. that that has thrown me for a... That is... The... The really fun part here is it does read fairy and utilizing like the pinks and purples we see from fairy and they're still 
that, that that's still a warm color so you can add depth to fire which is like a pretty bright you know element and we think red and we think blue with the shinies but like getting all that that color in that movement really prevents that fire from feeling stale and like overpowering the design you know yeah that's what it's going for awesome i'm just staring uh, oh, at this thing yeah there's yeah. so much to it he's a cute yeah i i did my, it's still pretty complex i did my best to keep the body as simple as possible but yeah there's just there's a lot going on uh, i did change the name he was bulgo wolf before um which was like a little too on the nose so he's bulgo clips uh, and because of pokemon oh the shiny the shiny uh, yeah. Yeah, that's shiny. Uh, so, strange fairy type energy emanates from its massive tail, allowing Bulgoclips to float above the ground. Uh, and I guess levitate because of that. Uh, it isn't able to fly particularly high, but this still has only increased its desire to catch the sun and the moon. Uh, wow. They also have some connection to solar and lunar eclipses as their power is boosted during these events. Does this guy just yeah. run up to space? <laughs> then, no. <laughs> He, he definitely, he definitely wants he to. He had a dream to ca he had a dream to catch the celestial bodies, and you know what? And by God, he will reach the yeah. stars. <laughs> oh Does he my... play fetch with comets? He must. Also, yeah. I love that uh, Rayoma. So you were grass and poison basically balances against my fire and hmm. fairy. Uh -huh. uh, I told you they were making yes. a region together. Depen yep. Depending <laughs> on what Bonnie is, I will also be able to tie into this. <laughs> so, hmm. So right hmm. Then, yeah. yeah, I know. Can I ask about the the Everstone looking thing in the chest? What's yes. Yeah, so on the original drawing, there was kind of a lot going on. It had like a sun on its side and there were stars and there was also something on its head um, so I wanted to pull in some of that circular stuff to to work as our moon slash sun parallels that are still and the stars obviously migrated to the tail and whatnot but yeah I imagine that they would kind of glow during attacks um, you yeah. know when you use yeah. yeah moon moon stuff yeah it's so genius now looking back at the original how it has like kind of star shapes just on it and you're like let me just do like stars within the fire of the tail which just adds like it doesn't overclutter the design at all i'm i'm blown away honestly uh <laughs> and i i hate that i'm going last <laughs> but <laughs> wow dude two lines yeah. down does the does the tongue have any significance, or is that just because it's a good boy? Uh, it is a good boy. It is. I, I wanted it to be cute, like yeah. basically. Yeah, adds a lot of character. It needed to be fun and adorable. <laughs> I yeah. There could be like, well, the tongue is a. There's a hidden meaning with dogs' tongues in ancient Korea, and this is what it is. But like <laughs> sometimes, sometimes Pokemon just have like it's just we just did this because it's cute, that. you know. There's no deeper yeah, meaning. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I didn't look into it. You know, there are dog breeds that have like blue and purple tongues. So I, I made it that. I don't actually know if the bull guy breed has a purple tongue, but I hope it does. Well, surprise, oh, well. kids. <laughs> Pokemon take yeah. uh, influence from all sorts of things and they're not just tied to one animal. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bonaft has a little round object. The puppy chases round things, right? Or is that the second form? Oh. The story I mean, continues. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Betrayers. Betrayers of worlds. The both the... What? The, the, they planned this against us. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is a big dog as well, I will say. Yeah, it's very large. It, wow. Well, that is a, it is a starter as well, so... It's the Firefox logo. <laughs> <laughs> it totally is. No, yeah. it is a Firefox. And I, you know what? I did want to say this earlier, but um, if I went the fire route, like this was the one I wanted to work on. So kind of cool how that worked out. And then also nice. Ryoma's 2 was like one I was like, oh, if I did grass, I really like this one too. So funny how uh, there's a lot of... Great minds think alike and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We opened the briefcase, we have these two lovely Pokemon, but there should be a water type here. Bonnie, mm -hmm. what does that look like? No, no, I, like I said, I have to restart. You know, these guys, they came swinging, apparently, you know, I wasn't invited to the region um, development uh, <laughs> meeting. So I have nothing to say, goodbye, you traitors. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no. Uh, what's up, everybody? It's me, Bonnie. I do want to say, first of all, thank you to everybody for submitting your work. Because、um, I know it can be. Yes. Yeah. Like, I know it can be very scary to put yourself out there. Gonna be privy to critiques, and it's a scary thing, but that is the first step in getting better. I am Professor Bothy, so of course you know I'm gonna be incorporating lessons to my redesign. Absolutely.、Okay. I wanna add in really quickly. We received loads of submissions. I believe it was over 100.、Mm. Nice. Some of them were better than what we could <laughs> do to them. Yep. Yeah, what are you doing,、yep. guys? Those, those people that did that, come on now. I also appreciate the hustle. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Thank you,、the、everyone. Swindle. Thank you. <laughs> the most important thing to me was to find a set of designs that showed promise in the concept and that they put a genuine effort in the execution of it, right? So, everyone, please give it up to Astral underscore Pilot and their line of Swabara, Topaira, and Cap Croon. The concepts here、yeah. are, is that we have very simply an archetype. The type itself and the animal. Lesson one is you know, really paying homage and understanding, looking at the source materials, right? There's a reason why starters, let alone water starters, look like starters, right? There's a specific look that they have, and we have to hit that mark. So when I look at Swabara, it looks like it could more be a general water Pokemon in the world, you know? But like、mm -hmm. I said, there's so much potential in this line, which is why I chose Astral Pilot's work. In their tweet, they mentioned they were focusing on making this a creature based off of coconut crabs, right? Coconut crabs, did I say? Coconut、um, octopus、Plus. that use, like, you know, a kind of shell for protection.、Mm -hmm. So that's what they were trying to go for in the motif. I kind of eschewed that to better focus on the pirate aspect. I guess I've chatted enough, right? <laughs> the setup is、um, ready. The main goal for Suabara is to establish a solid base to set up the reformed direction of the line, both visually and in personality. A beak reiterates the fact that we're looking at an octopus. And speaking of which, let's use those eight arms in fun ways throughout this entire run. The bucket head's gotta go ASAP, and half the arms can be used as a hairstyle, while the remaining half turns the whole body into a mop. Out with the old and in with the new. As a result, we get some nice movement resembling waves of water as well. Really letting the new form express its typing. Everyone say hello to Swabub.、Oh. <laughs> the deckhand Pokemon. Oh my word. Oh, Swabub. So, Swabub. That is the、um, name and a half. Yeah, like Swabara was fine, but Swabub felt a little more fun to say, a little felt more like startery, you know? It's it's booby, it's baby, it's, it's a bub. It, <laughs> we're I get, incorporating that like sea, sea dog language kind of feel, you、yeah. know? Yes. Is, is he a, he's a mop, is he not? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, <laughs>、yes. so good. So I was thinking, I was like, he's so, not an anchor, there's something going on here. Uh, as the lowest ranked in their pods, these young Pokemon are often left behind by their squadrons. This has often led, them, led to them being picked up by humans who think they are young children wrapped up in a blanket, leading to their starter status. Oh my god. So, we can take a look and see the difference between the two designs. And, you know, again, we can talk about art style, we can talk about proportions and color palette. But I think my biggest criticism across the line. Uh, since they were trying to, again, like focus on that coconut octopus angle, and a lot of fake mon artists will use man made objects and whatnot to sell a concept. And to me, that's one of my pet peeves because it doesn't really feel natural. So, in my quest to reimagine this line, it was a, a matter of importance, of utmost importance, to translate the very man made stuff that we see. Like, for example, here's a blanket on this Pokemon, here's a,、uh, like、a mop bucket with like, strands of the mop hanging for hair. You know, we're creative enough, and the octopus is such an. A, a, Powerful, beautiful, interesting creature that can shoot ink. It can, you know,、uh, allocate its limbs to, you know, conform to different structures as needed. They're、uh, in little some weirdos. Cases, they can camouflage. Yeah, yeah they're little weirdos. <laughs> Swabub are extremely hardworking Pokemon who eagerly await their chance to be taken on expeditions, either with their own kind or on human vessels. They're always looking for ways to prove themselves useful, 
often tasked with mopping up open quarters and they do so with great cheer. While they consider themselves brave, thunderstorms and rocky ocean waves do send them into a panic, and Swabub often inadvertently secrete dark ink as a defense mechanism. Embarrassed, they quickly mop up their mess and aim to face their fears in the future head-on in their hopes to move up on in the ranks of their pods. More story wow. design. Nice. We are trying to do it all. God. Oh no, I inked. That's yep. really cute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just a way of contextualizing the, sh the the like mopping thing. Is of course, of course, they'd mop up their own ink. That is, yeah. As well, right. It kind of ties back into that the original ones, the original dex entry is that they're left behind by the squadron. So this could be like, oh, they're left behind to like clean, not like they're abandoned. It's like the squadron yeah. comes back, kind of. We have a character who's excited to go on the high seas. You know, they're like, I want to be a pirate. I want to be you know, this explorer, like, I'll do whatever it takes, right? Um, and uh, the shiny is uh, meant to look like just kind of a dirty mop. This guy's kind of put, mm -hmm. put through the ringer. <laughs> um, I like the red eyes, though. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get that dark type. Wonder where that's going. I like going. the eyes in general. Like, I, first thing that struck me about this design was the eyes. They're so unique. Like, I've never seen a Pokemon have these kind of eyes before. I'm a huge fan. Right. Of yeah. yeah. Thank you. And as a water starter um, chooser, I would definitely be extremely satisfied with Swabub as uh, Oh, nice. Good, 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 good. Wherever shall it go? Yeah, wherever shall it go? Speaking of which, we'll <laughs> use that to segue towards Astral's next design, which is Topira. Now, we, between the two, there is a sizable jump between uh, Swabara and Topira. In the past, this line was often confused for pirates as they would often hunt and sink ships in order to create wooden armor. They also used the sails as a way to further obscure their silhouette. No one knows why they all collectively wear mops on their heads. <laughs> I like that detail. It's, it, yeah, it, it's cute. We, can, you know, I can't imagine you're raising your little swab up in an industrial building, fighting a gym leader far from water or anywhere. Your little guy evolves, and then like a mop appears on his head yeah. you know, after it's done glowing <laughs> you know what did i do i turned the top half of you know or rather four limbs for hair right to give personality to the little guy swabub and then the bottom four um became the mop right and it being a character that wants to earn its keep it's mopping its you know with its body not to mention those shapes also create waves of water, which is a fun thing. Another thing you want to do is subtly incorporate language into designs of types if possible. So at the top, you've got like a little bit of a spike to not just add interest to the silhouette, but it could look like the entire head's a, a drop of water, right? The bottom of like waves coming out. With Topira, um, when I see it, again, I'm not really feeling um, water starter just because the, the browns are a color we haven't really seen in the starters. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard to gauge its personality. The pose isn't really doing much to tell us about the personality as well. It's still like a fun and endearing design, you know? Uh, something that I think is such a fun triumph in their design here is because the octopus is such, um, you know, it's got a clear form in its body, but when you see this thing undulating under the water, the way it moves, it's so mesmerizing and it feels like it's formless and so they're like well to make it a human it's kind of like fitting itself into a suit of armor right yeah yeah. i really like that but there is a version of this reimagining where maybe they get like a plate of armor and then it houses all their tentacles as it were but when i see this it's limiting the pokemon's movement and their overall capacity to emote, which is so important for, you know, not just a water Pokemon who needs to like be very flowy. But a starter but in starters general. that, yeah, 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 you wanna see this guy like running alongside with you, keeping up with you. So all of that said and more, let's go ahead and install this middle stage's new personality with an interesting pose and make it feel like a sassy teen. These stages are always meant to feel funny and awkward as we're finally adding edge and grit from the baby form but laying down the seeds for what's to come in the final form. The current iteration doesn't tell us much about the character, and the expression is hard to read, so I'm going with a pose fitting for an explorer. Like before, we'll restructure the arms to add nice movement to the silhouette as well as a means to organically create pirate-like features. In this case, the mop head is traded for a bandana. Everyone say hello to Bosunder. Hello. The deceptious Pokemon. <laughs> 
Wow. So. Oh, my my guy with the <laughs> with the ponytail. <laughs> Ex- yes. We further continue the idea that we have an octopus. He's malleable, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and use what they give us. So, you know, hey, as we continue turning a blob, right? That's a, a metaphor this, for this baby that needs to be molded by life. Uh, now he's getting a more humanoid shape, right? He's picked the dark typing along the way. That was something I was wrestling with, choosing whether or not to keep it water dark for this middle form. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't like the progression that it becomes dark all of a sudden, like a turn heel. So in this instance, it's not that it's evil. And another thing, remember, we can make dark Pokemon still feel like anti-heroes and not like edge lords who are like, I'm evil because I'm a pirate. Absolutely, mm-hmm. Incineroar is like goofy bro yeah he turns out he loves kids and stuff he's like yeah like with this guy it's not that he's dark because he's like evil per se but once again right we have to tell that story we got to get the character arc you know buddy is growing up he's seeing the reality of the world he's got to get down to work right his hair is now tied up to look like a bandana um this is a particular win in this design and you know (laughs) another tip guys use you know, pop culture and and other references to, you know, help push your designs forward. You know, I was looking at Splatoon, right? And I'm like, okay, I can get some fun stuff from from that world. And I got this really fun way to incorporate such an iconic element of a pirate design, right? A bandana and do it in an organic way. I I just feel like it'd be so easy for someone who's making like an octopus starter to kind of just be like, they have to have the eight tentacles. And then it's like, where do you put them? And right, eight limbs right. are a lot. We have grapple locked, and they do it in a fun way yeah, too. Exactly. Right? Believe, yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of his arms are a belt that sells his fighting kind of type type of deal, and um, just yeah, I, I agree. Like this ties back that, into again, the um, the kind of water starter uh, quote unquote theory, um, that even <laughs> even though this is a mollusk, I was going to say fish, um, it's still. <laughs> is able to stand and I can so clearly like imagine this guy kind of running behind you kind of yeah flapping those exactly big feet around god I keep bringing it back to feet stop what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> it's always the, the middle, middle stages with the feet oh man yeah boy yeah he got big feet man I can hear the suctiony noises as it runs at me <laughs> bro Squ- yeah. squid- 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 moment, like <laughs> yeah you know like again I want to shout out astral further I-, I love the idea of it confining Um, It's limbs to appear human-esque like that's such a fun kind of concept there There are Pokemon who are burdened with tasks ranging from the incredibly mundane to extremely deadly They begin their careers of their new rank with great excitement and are quickly worked to exhaustion Learning a wide range of skills needed to eventually lure their own pods lead their own pods excuse me Soon they are disgruntled and begin to pull grifts on one another to gain the upper hand on their race to the top They often fight dirty incorporating ink into their water to blind their prey and do anything to gain the upper hand. Eventually, only the most cunning Bosunder remain in the runnings, often turning other Bosunder against the captain of their pods and forcing Swabubs to join their cause and eventually snatch control. Oh. Story. It's like, the story continues. It's like Bisharp almost. Mm, yeah, same thing. Like, I needed to establish that hierarchy. It's so important for, you know, the pirate storyline. And again, we're continuing that storyline of this like bright-eyed kid who's like, I want to be an adventurer. And then he's out on scene and he's like, actually, this this sucks. I am <laughs> um, so excited to see what this turns into. I can't wait to share that design. So before we do that, we'll need to introduce Astral's next and final form, Cap Croon. Oh my god. At, wow. Yes, oh. as the highest ranked in their pods, These Pokémon are responsible for hunting and sinking ships. When they perform a successful hunt, they often have to defend these points from Delmise who seek to scavenge their anchors. Uh, This has led to a rivalry between the two Pokémon. That's some fun world building there, I love that. Love the Mm -hmm. world building. They laid a very strong foundation for me to understand their direction. That's part of why I chose to do this line. And in that fun way, again, I can teach that we can take these organic elements like Again, I'm looking at the hat here, the, the the wooden ship element on the chest. It's fun, but it's not very Pokemon, right? Like the idea of the coconut octopus having that shell and, and growing with it, that's landing throughout, but the challenge 
was again, if the way I'm building everything out is organically, how do I make a pirate, mm -hmm. you know? When you guys are choosing to make your starters, especially when we're doing a modern day interpretation, the fact that Astro Pilot's water dark type pirate octopus, when you put it all together, right? They've kind of hit everything that works together in conjunction, right? Like octopus are incredibly, like I said, unique animals that are so malleable. We can use that form and make an organic, as we saw, like a first mate type with a bandana. We can make a mop out of it. We can eventually make a captain. Um, when we look at, you know, like fun cryptozoology, you know, mythological stuff, the Kraken, right, is a very powerful, dark, oh feeling God, scary sea monster, right? It's, an, it's this giant octopus that destroys ships. You know, Astral chose these kind of elements, and I'm like, yeah, I can see a very vengeful octopus taking down ships, or, you know, maybe not even that outright as their focus in my take, but to be dangerous pirates on the sea. There isn't a fun progression in color in the lines, like, because color can do so much. Uh, if we look at both Swabub and Bosunder, it was very important for me to have this early Pokemon feel, you know, have a lot of white in it. One, to sell the mop, but to, to show purity and innocence, you know, good intentions as they hit the sea. Mm -hmm. Then in the second form, you know, as the character develops, so does the, the darkness on its body, right? Hinting to the dark type that's to come, right? So I wanted to establish all of that so that I can properly introduce you guys to our final Pokemon of the Waterline. As we've previously established the subtle ruinous tides manifesting in the middle stage, let's now wrap the character in crashing waves that truly bring out its dark typing for its final form. We're gonna lean more into a humanoid shape like most starters end up in, and we'll balance out some nice curves of all the varying tentacles across sharper edges for some much needed visual contrast. The defining headpiece is built on the natural, organic shape that octopi tend to have, followed by a dangerous expression leading towards a pose that highlights its signature move. Please, everyone, bow, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> to Abyss Armed, what? the pirate Pokemon. <laughs> oh, oh my. Abyss Armed. God. Yes. I had to change the name, too. Cap Croon just didn't feel dark or menacing enough. While Cap Croon also is a fun design building off of what we got in the middle stage, it didn't push its personality enough for my taste. You know, if you're making it a dark type, let's make it feel dark, right? Let's make it feel full of wrath and anger. They mentioned in their mm -hmm. Twitter post that they wanted to kind of follow that water typing with the, the weapon the theory. Weapons. Yeah, so they're like, oh, it fires off harpoons. And now I like that idea and I just couldn't quite see how it would work with water. And ultimately, I decided to kind of change the weapon towards like more of like a uh, like a blunderpuss type of thing, right? Uh -huh. Octopus, blunderpuss, it all comes together. <laughs> so it is complete control over all of its tentacles and it can arrange itself um, as needed into like more powerful and interesting yeah, cannons. Because I was gonna you know? say it has three arms on one side and or three tentacles on one arm and one on the other. So I imagined it could like swap them back and forth. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There was an iteration where I had the four is like the full cannonball style. The three is like the harpoon dagger or something. The two is, you know, uh -huh. I was figuring out potential configurations. Also, the, the way the top two tentacles are kind of lined up is almost like a shotgun, like the double barrel yeah. with <laughs> even the notch because it's aiming down the sights low key. It's giving like, I have seen know it's a squid, but it's giving kind of like bird energy almost. Which Well, because you know what it is, is that um, and I incorporated through the rest of the line. Um, those creatures, octopus, have beaks. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, very much yeah. shaped like parrot beaks. They're like, you know, really hard and used to, you know, obviously crush into their food. And so, I established early on we have the beak, and then it mm -hmm. kind of like gets. We get a little funny. Yeah, because I was mouth, gonna, mustache. I was gonna ask, was it a mustache yeah. in the second stage? Oh. It's it's its mouth, but I wanted to do something a little more fun and also introduce the the texture that's coming into the design. Abyss armed are feared across the seas of the Pokemon world, imposing their will on any creature that chooses to stand in its way. 
It is incredible dexterity that allows it to reshape its limbs as it sees fit to dodge attacks or even create an armed cannon that fires pressurized bursts of ink. On land, they are cunning fighters that fight with range, but in the water, their prowess is unmatched, using smoke screens to ambush their prey. These dangerous creatures have a historical rivalry with Delmise, and tales of legendary captains of the past sing of abyss arm that keep them as pets or trophies. They stop at absolutely nothing to plunder what they desire. I can see this guy just like, I can't, I can't describe it, like just flopping down, just into like an octopus shape and then standing back up, you know, like. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, hell like, yeah. I want it to be so stretchy and just like, um, you know. I want it to be able to kind of keep up with Greninja. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, he's, he's a little bit strong, but hey, listen, I, I draw <laughs> these Pokemon, okay? I don't know a lot about the battling types. If it were me, I would be a Pokemon Ranger protecting all these cute little creatures, okay? so Yeah, I think the, the chest piece, the kind of beard, ruffly thing, that, and the, like, coattails, getting the coattails yes, in there, yes, like, yes. That's, those Yet are my another favorite organic way. Mm -hmm. Yet yeah. another way I can incorporate the eight and spread them apart to sell this design. I don't have to use literal pieces of wood, right? Or maybe coconut husks. I feel like you haven't got enough credit for the shinies on these guys as well. Yeah, I... Them all oh. right, but yours are incredible. <laughs> Especially the um, the final stage, the red. And I love the kind of pinky uh, seaweed because you get that mm -hmm. sort of color in it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't care. Like, cool factor is the most important thing. Like, we're making this guy, like, red and black like Reninja, like... It's gotta be red, you know? So I was like, no shame, he's just gonna look cool, you know? <laughs> that was the inspiration there. There's nothing special about it beyond that, you know? Well, it works. Um, I also want to say, yeah, this is you. super up my street specifically. I... Because I... <laughs> I was gonna be like real, but yeah. this is your bro, right? <laughs> this is this is my type of thing. I'm really into like the more bipedal Pokemon starters, and I mm -hmm. was thinking, how are they gonna is he gonna make a bipedal octopus? Uh, and right. it works fantastically. I also would like to say that the one closed eye that was like super eye patch coded. That's exactly. Really cool. Oh my god! Oh, that's really well. Yeah, yeah. Shut that, up. Exactly. <laughs> it's and I'm I'm doing that here just for clarification. I'm thank you so much. By the way, thank you. You could do a thing where it's like, oh, in in reality, in the Pokemon world, like humans got that symbol from that Pokemon. Like I can buy that with like some concepts, but here I for sure wanted to make it look kind of like the eye patch thing, but. Once again, selling personality, aiming right down the sights. I wanted to avoid that thing. I saw a lot of pirate fake mon that would give the Pokemon like a stump or a hook or a eye patch. And then the thing is, when we're designing these Pokemon, we need to imagine that there are like, in this case, pods, right? Or, or crews of these Pokemon. Would every single Abyss Armed have, you know, an eye patch or, or like a damaged eye? No, like in the anime, maybe we'd see one, right? Like this old rusty pirate who lost its eye and that's a specific character. But thank you for noticing that, thank you. I've just copped as well that the tentacles are hook shaped. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that I didn't. You yeah, know. it's just all it all circular. But, but yeah, all no, comes I together. meant to. No, no. Yeah, all, together, all comes together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so imagine the professors in front of you. They have the briefcase. And they have the three Pokeballs, classic Pokemon stuff. But then they're like, "Hey, do you want this other one?" Clearly, there have never been four starter choices in the main Pokemon series. It's always between fire, grass, and water. Yes, there are the spin-offs, you could say. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee, where your choice is electric or normal, based on the game. Then there's also Colosseum, where those two starters evolve from an Eevee, which is a normal type. What I'm getting at is the type that I picked for the fourth starter is normal. So something that um, low-key has bugged me from kind of a young age was uh, back in the day, kids, 21 years ago when Ruby and Sapphire came out. Yes, 2002. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be in the playground, right? I mean, I, I'm sure this is still true. But, I was, but like back in the days before you had like Wi-Fi connections, you'd have like three friends because you'd have like, oh, I want to get this starter, you know, and you can only get one starter per save file. So you'd have to get three friends, but you only have like two versions of the game. So like you'd have two kids with Ruby and then one kid with Sapphire and then they'd like get all the starters. But then the one kid with Sapphire would be like, oh, now I have to catch twice as many Lunatones to trade to my friends. Whereas like the two Ruby guys are just living and they're like, oh, can you please give me another starter? So like if you had four starters, then like you had four friends and then you could have two Sapphires, two Rubies, they both like cancel each other out, you know? 
Anyway. Is this just a ploy to get more friends? Yes! Yeah, like, just, just say it, man. <laughs> Uh, there's no art in the video, I'm just here to talk to people for an hour. <laughs> um, and then obviously, yeah, you know, the, the third version of the game comes out uh, a year later, but like no kid is waiting a year to get a starter or trade a starter and all that jazz. So I was looking through the submissions and obviously because there are no normal or electric type start, like traditional ones, because it's only really Pikachu and Eevee, they don't follow the kind of three act evolutionary style. I did want to do that. I'm shooting in the dark a little bit. So I have to kind of go back and think about what do all the other starters do, but how do I incorporate that into a design that is its own thing from the rest of them. The designs that I chose were by an artist called Dent Smothers, and they are Inglis, Swyron, oh, and Hogsidian. My best friends. So little this pigs. Is <laughs> so English is has soft metallic fur and trainers use it as a pillow and it's an absolute scrunkly then Swyron is used as a pitching machine which I believe is for baseball we don't yep. we don't do that kind of thing over here so <laughs> thank you Americans uh, <laughs> um, and then it's it's kind of back is like a backboard that they would then throw the balls back at it I guess and um, it's also part steel type and then finally, it evolves into Hogsidian, which is just an outright cannon, but it can no longer kind of play with its trainers because it's too dangerous, because it's covered in spikes, all that jazz. Mm. So here I saw kind of like a really good basis and like a concept that I could work with, but on its own as starters, I felt there was something missing. So the biggest one came to me with Hogsidian. All Pokemon, should be, and we've said it plenty before, should be capable of being your friend. This mm -hmm. applies to starters, like, times 10. If you can't chill with your starter on the couch, you know, watching a movie, playing games, whatever, then, you know, Venusaur on a couch is kind of a weird visual, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I yeah, so yeah. Like yeah. he is the couch. I, I don't know how I'm chilling with Torterra, but, but like, you know, couch, yeah. you, you could lie on Torterra's back. Torterra is the couch. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. whereas kind of Hogsidian, it's like, oh, you'd cut yourself on the spikes, you know, all that jazz. So, I didn't get, like, a, an etymology breakdown, so, like, of the names. So, if I had to guess, Inglet is, like, an iron ingot from Minecraft and Piglet, which is why it's mm -hmm. rectangular. Then Swyron is swine and iron. And then Hogsidian is hog and obsidian. It's part steel type, but obsidian is a rock. So, you know, I'm like, okay. I feel like these guys could be like a good like, oh, they're founded like Route 111, you know, but I don't feel they have kind of the starter vibe. Something that's important when it comes to like changing, when you're redesigning Fake Man, you can change everything about them. You, like, because it's usually like, oh, I'll keep the concept the same, change the design, I'll keep the design the same, I'll change the names, I'll keep the type the same, I'll change the concept, anything like that. Because if we all stuck with the names that we picked for Fake Man when we were 12, <laughs> nothing, nothing would get done, you know? <laughs> Your first pass of a name doesn't have to be the name that the fake man is stuck with the whole time. So I will be renaming all of these three guys. So Inglet is cute and could definitely work as like a an ordinary root Pokemon. But the problem is that it's missing something that every other base form starter has. He don't have a body. <laughs> <laughs> when redesigning Inglet, I initially tried to keep it fairly one-to-one -one with the original art, but when examining all the pre-existing starters, a feature they all share is having a distinguished head and body, so I gave them a torso. I put a lot of attention into redesigning the final stage first, so a few things here will end up following through, the messier hair, cheek warts, and the big bobblehead that recent starters have been known to have. It was important to make it happy, appealing, and overall a potentially tough choice between it and the other three starters. So I introduce you to Snortless. Oh, it's so cute. And this just in, you don't have to do Sugi style to create convincing fake man. You can draw a fake man in crayon. Mm. It's all the same. I just, I only say that because I am following up these three absolutely amazing artists and I <laughs> don't want to be discounted. <laughs> no, I agree. I see that right here for sure. You might be thinking, yeah. Dead Bedspread, we already have a a pig starter. I got news for you, kids. We also have two cats, two crocodiles, two tortoises, two frogs, two lizards, two monkeys, four birds. I guess Charmander is. 
I, I was actually, I was counting Trico and Sable. I didn't think about Charmander for some reason. He's too popular, you know, he just, he just flies out my brain. Yeah, leave him out, leave him out. He he, he's he a drag. It. So, Snortlet are very receptive to music, instinctively bopping their heads. While they are soft and cuddly, their skulls can pack quite a punch if they get lost in a rhythm. In the wild, their large noses are used to forage for food. So just tying it a little bit of pig lore there, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So because with the original three, between Swyron and Ahogsidian, there was kind of the the theme of like, oh, they launched something out of their snout. But then England is just a, a pillow. You know, there it didn't seem like there was kind of a, a concise through line. So the mention to music in the dex entry is not for nothing. We're setting stuff up here. Mm -hmm. So with the cheeks as well, I want to just add in these bumps because we have a few pig Pokemon already. You know, we have Tepic, Spoink, Swinub, uh, Lechonk. But as far as I know, and I know a lot about Pokemon, sorry kids, none of them are based on warthogs. They're all just based yeah. on like pigs and boars. Right. Mm -hmm. So I guarantee you somebody in the comments is going to be like, mm, actually, warthogs and pigs are two different things. But as we've mentioned already, um, <laughs> Pokemon could take influence from many different things all the time. So uh, I am going for warthog here. I kind of want to keep this guy as is. I don't want to evolve him. I just want to hold him. He's a little I'm uh... excited. I I feel like is are you going mm, sound type sound move with He's normal? He's doing the sound type. So, the I mean, sound not type the sound starter. type, but, but like with all the normal sound based moves mm -hmm. and his rhythms so, and okay. Mm -hmm. Because pigs in real life are actually receptive to music, but it is tying back to the kind of in the fake man community when people address fake types, sound is the one that is kind of already in the game and it is already normal type. A lot of this, the big sound moves are normal type. Like you have um, the hyper voice, uh, boom burst, round, uh, uproar, like all of those are normal based. Mm -hmm. Or normal type, rather. Um, and then, obviously, the hidden ability is punk rock. You know, we're kind of setting it up yeah. from right on the nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was like, I need to appeal to Ryoma somehow, whose favorite Pokemon is Toxtricity. <laughs> yeah, no, it's awesome. I'm, in, I'm ready to see the uh, punk rock influence. Yeah, so, like, obviously, it's just base. Oh, the Mohawk at the top. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Because I want, oh, and then kind of its big nose with snorting is what it uses to kind of like make noise back, uh, which we will get into. So how do I evolve this guy into like a pitching machine? I'm like, I, I can't, but I, <laughs> I wanted to kind of keep the, the kind of silhouette of that guy. It's a starter Pokemon. And now we have a setup with music. I have to make an edgy teen phase, you know? I designed the last stage first, the first stage second, and the second stage last. It can be easier for an artist to design stages one and three before the middle one, as you can then design a natural progression between these two stages. However, it's important to make sure that the middle evolution still feels like its own character, not just a blend between what it once was and what it will eventually end up being. My redesign of Swiron ditches the iron plating for a more messy mohawk, keeps the long snout, and hints at some traits that we may see once it fully evolves. And yes, the angsty teenage energy is 100% intentional. At level 16, Snortlet evolves into Snorthog. <laughs> Yo. Yo! That's my guy! Yo. That's my guy! Oh, that eyeliner. Mm -hmm. it's so good. <laughs> Wait! He's such a teenager. I love the hair, I love the stra- like the, the striped booties. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I love his like bangs in the front. Like he looks just like me in high school, dude. <laughs> exactly, he's covered <laughs> covered in warts as well. You know, he's not really uh, yeah. he's not fitting in. So naturally moody, they are quick to conflict. During tantrums, their long snouts can be used to emit snorts and squeals louder than a supersonic airliner. They are naturally calmed yep. when listening to melodies. Wow. The hair lining their backs is coarse and rough to the touch. So Ooh, we've is it getting harder. Yeah, so we've set up a development where Snortlet is soft. That keratin is toughening up. I wonder what might happen. No, that's hair gel, dude. I, yeah. I used to put too much in my hair myself. I, I know how hard it got. The supersonic airliner thing, you might think is like, oh, it's one of those dex entries where they're like, oh, Larvitar eats mountains for breakfast. Uh, mm -hmm. But pigs um, can actually scream at 115 decibels. <laughs> Which is around oh. the, the level of a, a jet engine. Jesus. The basic way that I have um, reinterpreted the picture idea is that instead of like shooting an object, it can project shoot sound blasts out of the nose. Oh, I love nice. that. Yeah, that's the Very translation. Good. 
the professional touch. It's almost like a trumpet or a kazoo or something. That's awesome. <laughs> and I almost see the um, the body shape looks a bit like a baseball in some way. I don't know if that was intentional. Oh yeah, I guess so. Something like the pattern on the underside. Um, but right. the general just body shape as a whole, I was gonna say from the original sketch of the original version, I actually really enjoyed the like um, the body shape of the middle form, how it was very kind of exaggerated and with mm -hmm. the really long snout. So I'm glad you kept that over and mm -hmm. brought it over, yeah. I wanted to make sure Retain there were key features. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to make sure there were some sort of features that were retained in the redesign. Um because I was like it even though it doesn't have like the plates on its back, it still has like the hair going up. So some extra head cannon here is that uh, it's in its rebellious phase because it knows that it's the fourth starter and it knows that it's different from everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I Removed the steel type though from the second stage just because I think it would be OP because it's the most defensive type. Um, yeah. There obviously is the allusion to the back air becoming coarse and rough. So I've already established a music theme. What kind of music might it like? Fuck. I'm gonna say. I mean, metal? Mm. Classical. What does Matt. What, what is metal? Hmm. What kind of type could that mean? Steel perhaps? Rot row. Classical. I forgot that metal music is this, and I thought this was going to be a rock type. I thought you, you were going to change it, but no, no, metal music is a thing. You always forget, I always forget that. Yeah, so, uh, this isn't a phase, Mom. It's an awakening. So, we have a team of music, but how did I get there from the OG3? You know, it was like a pillow pitching machine cannonball. How does that turn into music? So, did anybody study Tchaikovsky in school? No, I've only listened to his stuff on YouTube for like three hours. <laughs> those are those really long compilations. So in the 1812 overture, which is the one that goes like da 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 mm. Tchaikovsky, the mad lad, used something very niche as an instrument. Cannons. So I see cannon fire, oh. I'm like, <laughs> I know this niche reference from when I was 17. What are cannons made out of? Metal, steel, metal as a genre of music. What else is prevalent in the metal genre? Pig squealing, like the vocal technique. It was all coming together. I was basing these guys off warthogs. Warthogs have hair lining their backs, almost looking like mohawks. Something as well with Hogsidian that I thought was kind of like, this is a cool design choice, but there's nothing there to really back it up, was the fact that it has like these massive front legs and like absolutely like vestigial yeah. back legs. I saw that and I gotta say, <sighs> I love that about that design. Like, and that's like the canon, that makes sense. I'm not sure what inspired that. It reminded me, um, has anybody played Sly Cooper? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it's definitely a big uh, mugshot energy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bro be walking around like that, you know, for real. That element to me, I was like, it doesn't really make sense for a starter, you know? There has been something alluded to thus far that starters nowadays are bipedal. Obviously with this one, you're like, oh, is it gonna stand up? Is it gonna stay in four legs? Uh, we will see. I wanted to create a final starter evolution that appeals to Game Freak's current sensibilities of giving starter Pokemon jobs. Entertainers, marksmen, musicians. As mentioned, I designed this stage first, landing on a heavy metal punk rock warthog. Adjusting the proportions was tricky, the mohawk had to be tweaked after I did the line art to give this hog a more imposing height, but I knew that we couldn't keep the original Hogsidian's massive front arms and practically non-existent back legs. This design choice seemed to be something that the artist just thought was cool rather than something overly considered and referenced, so while my redesign still has big arms, they also have fully capable legs. I hope you can forgive me. Snorthog evolves into Snout Rage. Ooh, <laughs> an excellent name too. Thank you to my yeah. patrons for giving me that one. Hey, <laughs> shout out patrons. Oh, this is my favorite kind of Pokemon body type, just like super yeah, top heavy. Same. Yeah, so, yeah, same. So I, I had to lean into um, the every starter Pokemon has a job now. So I'm mm -hmm. like, this guy is a musician. You might be like, we already have Rillaboom. It's like, yeah, but we also already have Primarina, you know, different mm -hmm. genres, different musics. And Skeletosh. There's loads of musical ones. The guttural growls of Snout Rage last several minutes at a time. 
They use their iron snouts to project concentrated sound blasts capable of turning stone to dust. The hair lining their backs is razor sharp. They have recently become popular with certain groups in the Gala region. Yeah, yeah. So be that okay. Team Yell or Toxtricity enthusiasts. I think my, my favorite detail right off the bat is the center claw on the hands is short, either shorter or like yeah, held nope. down. It's, it's yeah. short, it's short. It's short, yeah, that's so, awesome. So the idea there was... Um, Perpetual devil horns. The punk, the punk rock symbol. But also it has mm -hmm. the, um, the thumb, which makes it the I love you symbol. Aww. Because... Oh. This this is the thing in the metal jar. It's like to outsiders, it's always seen as like, oh, that's so scary and whatever. But it's always like big softies. Yeah, it's always big softies. So obviously with heavy metal, I was like, I needed to get. I couldn't have it having long hair. A mohawk seemed so much better because an Americanism for feral pigs is razorback. Mm. Razors are made of steel. Mohawks look like saws. So he's a proper musician now, lead singer, ringmaster, Loudon in charge. The warts that were on its face are now kind of lining it like it's the shape of a star, because he's the star of the show. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's just like Incineroar, you know, where it has like the villainous appearance, but it's like super friendly, just wants to jam. I really love his expression. And I, I, I love the, like uh, Ram was saying, I love the, this body type just speaks to me. Mm -hmm. I can see the big softy kind of thing, like this appearance, like, you know, he kind of just evolved the phase from before and just kind of grew into it, you know, rather than shy away, like kind of leaned into it. Uh, a lot of um, mega swampers in this, actually. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just... Yes. I also think the original design, uh, as much as I like the big kind of face mask thing it had going on, it had no room for emoting at all. And I think this guy is mm. yeah. incredibly personality driven. Like I wanted to keep kind of the red eyes as like the nod to that right and it kind of has like oh this is big and scary but it's like it's not even a dark type you know he it's just that's just the way he looks like he'll chill with you right. he'll 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 play ball yeah. with you you know I, I think of all the ones that we did this is the one that you know really you still kept the spirit intact you know, but like you got to like wildly transform it far and beyond and you don't know, find, you know, among the most important things you can do is set that through line and tell that story. Um, so yeah, I was just going through the original works and they're cute ideas and you know, there, there is some sort of progression there, but like watching it through here, it really looks like you paid great respect and homage to the inspiration, still made it your own still translated in a way that would feel like Pokemon, so... And you did it with, you know, the normal type. A type that we wouldn't really see for the starters, so... Kudos. Throwing you my kudos. Yeah, I've, I've set a new trend now. Game Freak needs to... <laughs> only a four starters from now on. The camera shifts just to the right. You're like, what's that? So something sure. else that appeals to me about the steel type. So let's pretend this is a, uh, a starter quartet. 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 <laughs> Music words, Yeehaw, cowboy. <laughs> normal steel. So, the normal type is neutral to the main three starter types. They're not good against each other. They're not bad against each other. Steel is uniquely defensive against all three. So, it resists grass, it's neutral to water, and it's weak to fire. Here's the other thing. Steel is immune to poison, it's good against fairy, and it's neutral to dark. Ooh, uh, we did it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and then Embor walks in and he just bodies this guy with one hammer arm because he's four times sweet to fight I don't think my guy can touch this one. He hates fighting. He just wants to jam. So he's four times sweet yeah, to he it. Just wants to, yeah, exactly. I mean, the trend has been set. Normal type fourth starter win. I'm it's actually 10, so maybe. happy that we all... Not only did we all get, like, different animals, but we all got, like, different type combos as well, you know? Oh, did yeah. does my water dark fit? Yeah, so, um... Grass, poison. It's weak to fairy, and then fairy's weak yeah. to poison. But Zark There's, isn't good on poison. The, the, starter trios don't need to be like a circle. That's like a yeah. myth. Y'all ever play Gen yeah. 4 where Empoleon <laughs> got bodied by the other two starters? It is very, yeah. it is incredibly Oops. close for something we did not plan. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. the cool part. So be sure to obviously go subscribe to these guys. Go show them your love. They're all super duper deserve it and they are all working on very very cool things obviously subscribe to me duh <laughs> and here's the thing okay we have a bunch of starters here should i bring in more artists for a part two 
work on creating a whole redesign region of redesigned fake mum. What? Ooh. Who could have seen this coming? Not me. <laughs> no, Ryoma no, didn't suggest this to me ahead of time at all. I didn't suggest this idea. <laughs> I actually legitimately... Huh? <laughs> Or is it too much? I think you'll have to let me know in the, the comments. The collusion continues. Yeah. <laughs> you have to support it with views and likes and subscriptions. If this doesn't get 100,000 views in 10 seconds, I'm never doing it again. And I'm deleting the video. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for watching, everybody. I've been DBS. And all the best. And all the best. All the best. <laughs> <laughs> you can edit them over each other. I will. We love to see it. No, make it messed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Delayed>. <laughs>